Hello, and welcome back to Code Labs 2018 Summer Edition. Uh, not that we have had a winter edition in quite a while, um, but welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are going to today talk about making websites, which will be very exciting if you haven't made one before. Um, I'm going to prefix all of this by saying that web development uh, is in many ways kind of one of the worst things about programming. Um, coding the back end of the websites is fine. HTML and CSS has uh, a little bit of uh, legacy issues. Um, so before we jump into this, just talk a little bit more about what we're going to do. This is a very be beginner, basic, introductory workshop. If you've done any sort of web stuff before um, with HTML and CSS, we're probably not going to get too advanced. We will talk a little bit about some cool new uh, techniques, um, things like SAS, uh, which if you've never used it and you have used some HTML and CSS, it's just a cool way to make your life a little bit easier. Um, we'll talk a tiny bit about hosting it, but not too much because that'll actually is something that we'll go into later. Um, and then we will um, basically by the end of this workshop, the goal is that we will have a very, very, very basic website that we could each use for, um, you know, for hosting maybe a personal website or, you know, as the basis for a project or something like that. We're not going to go too much into JavaScript, uh, which is an extension of web stuff. Um, but uh, if you want to learn more about JavaScript, uh, you know, feel free to, to talk in the chat. Again, throughout all of this, keep in mind if you have any questions um, outside of this workshop or you're watching the recorded video, um, please feel free to post in the chat, chat.srnd.org. Um, so with that, we're going to pretty much just jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and split my screen. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that you could be making a website, um, what you could be using for editing your website in. Basically, what you technically need is a text editor. And what we could use is something like, we've talked about this at previous workshops, um, Atom, Vim, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code, uh, Sublime Text, Notepad++, or technically even just Notepad. Um, those are a, a bunch of different options, and if you've used one before and you have a preference, um, go with it. Now, technically, for loading a website, you can load a website from your local um, computer. And in fact, if I really quickly make a website, um, uh, HTML body, don't worry about what all this is if you don't know what it is yet. I want to make a point. So if you don't know what all this is, again, no problem at all. But um, if I go ahead and go over to my web browser, don't worry about this yet. And I open my file browser and I just drag the page that I just created in. You can technically load a web page from absolutely anywhere. Um, you can load it from your local hard drive and whatever else. Now, in this particular workshop, we're going to be using a website called JSBin. JSBin. Uh, and that's what you'll search for if you want to find it. And you'll just click the first link, and it will pull up a website that looks like what I've just pulled up over here. It's got all of this um, by default. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and just delete all of this, um, just so we can go ahead and get started from scratch and kind of have a, a better idea of what's going on. So. Uh, we're going to use JSBin for this. Now, the thing about HTML is that just having a local file is not really sufficient to do anything really cool. You're probably going to want it to be accessible on the web. You're probably not going to want to be sending around HTML files to your friends. You probably want to tell them to go to mywebsite.org or .com or .net or, you know, whatever, whatever is available, um, .limo. Um, but for right now, we're going to just create our website on JSBin. The reason for that is solely just because it's got this live output thing on the right hand side. So as we create things, we can see what we're doing without having to refresh. We will um, figure out how to actually host it at the end of the workshop um, very, very briefly. So on this left hand side, this is the side where we're going to start putting in stuff that we want to do. So if you've never seen HTML before, uh, get ready because it is uh, a little bit more verbose than most programming languages. <laughs> Uh, that is for sure. If you've done any Python or you know PHP or uh, C Sharp or Java programming, uh, you may be thinking that programming is a little bit verbose. Uh, you haven't seen HTML yet. At uh, times, it can get a little bit much. So the goal with HTML is basically to describe the content that we have. And so for this example, we're going to be putting together a personal website, um, just a, a website for ourselves to to have some information about um, you know what it is that we've done. So. 
what are some things that we would want on a website? Uh, we could even perhaps make something, you know, just create what we'd call a mock-up um, in, um, in a, a, you know, like Microsoft Word or something like that. I don't have Microsoft Word, I have OpenOffice because uh, it's Linux and we don't have anything good. Um, so we'll do this and you know, maybe what I'd want is I'd want my name up here and I want it to be really big. Say something like that. Maybe I even want it to be bold. And then maybe in some smaller text, I want a list of projects. And then maybe I want a list. It does say a list of projects. And this will be back to whatever our regular font size is. And it will say, you know, um, I, I run code day. Let me zoom in a little bit just so you can see what I'm putting up here. Um, and maybe this will be a link, you know, this, so I'm not gonna actually make it a link, but let's say this is a link. And then I help organize Ignite Seattle. And this might be a link too. And you know, maybe it says I help at PAX West. Um, you know, some, some things that I do, uh, because when it comes down to it, I haven't actually made that many projects in a long time. Um, I have made an automated plant watering system. Now we could put images, we could make this look a lot nicer, um, but for right now, the most important thing to start out with is trying to figure out what the content is and roughly how it's organized. We're not trying to make it look pretty first. What we do first is we create the HTML and then we use this thing called CSS to make it look pretty. Now, if you ever created a website um, in a few minutes using like really bad online tutorials, you might be familiar with trying to do both at the same time. And in general, when you're making you know professional level websites and you're really, really experienced, you will often be kind of going back and forth. Um, but when it comes to beginner level, what we really want to do is we want to try to do one before the other, which is the HTML before the CSS. Get your general blocks down, figure out what the blocks of content are and what they contain before you actually get into trying to make it look pretty. And it's actually going to make our life a lot easier um, because HTML and CSS work together um, really closely and they can do much more powerful things than you often see in, in really bad tutorials. But on the other hand, um, it does get a little bit more complicated and doing it this way is going to be a little bit more uh, easier. So this is what we're going to start out with. We're going to try and make a website that looks like this. Um, Maybe there's some other things that we should want on our website. So I'm going to tell you another pro tip. And all of this, I know we haven't gotten into the coding yet, but all of this is actually helpful as you're starting to create things. So the other thing we'll do, let's use um, Chrome. We'll go to this website called Dribble. D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E, three Bs. That's how you spell it. Three, I can't highlight, three Bs. Dribbable, as I like to say. And uh, it's got this really cool, it's this really cool website where it's invite only and really good designers post examples of things that they've made. So I always like to go here first and just kind of look for, um, you know, inspiration for what it is that I might want to create. So in this case, I'm creating a personal website. Let's just do a search and just see, okay, all of these maybe look a little bit fancier than, um, you know, that I'm going to be able to create. But <clears throat> this is kind of nice. This is, you know, it's got the general idea. Here are some cool things that we might want to do. So yeah, maybe we want a navigation link. So let's, you know, let's go ahead and put that up there. So we're going to have, you know, right, right aligned, maybe a little bit smaller text. We're going to have, you know, a link to my resume. And maybe a link to, uh, you know, my... Um, I don't know, my YouTube page or some Twitch streams. Um, uh, maybe a link to my plant cam. Uh, so we'll have some links. And then maybe instead of just my name, I can do something like this guy. Uh, hello, you know, hello, I'm Tyler. Nice to meet you. So you can see already, this still looks like crap uh, to some extent, but it looks a lot nicer now because we've added, you know, a little bit of friendliness and fun. And that's something that I might not have thought about if, you know, not looking for inspiration behind, uh, you know, for, for other things. Another thing that you can do is look at websites of people that you think are really cool. So I actually do already have a website. Mine is not very great, um, just because I haven't put much time into it. 
I do have my plant cam linked on there if you want to watch plants grow in my closet. Um, but maybe here's a, a, a better one, TJ Horner, uh, who's one of our interns. And you can see that this, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And it has all that interactive stuff going on at the top. Um, but regardless of all of that, it's still, again, it's, it's just some basic text. Um, and he's got this really cool portfolio. So that's always where I like to start. Figure out roughly what you want to create. Um, create the content outline. Usually for professional designers, we'd probably do this in something like Photoshop or Illustrator or Sketch. And we would make it look a little bit nicer so that we could get a general feel for what we want it to look like in the end. Um, because it's easier to play around with something here than it is once we start trying to code it. Um, but uh, for this really basic workshop, we're just going to focus on generally the, the content outline. So let's start trying to translate this into HTML now that we've actually gotten an idea of what it is that we want to build. So we got, first of all, this really big um, heading. We got a smaller heading. We got a list with some links. Got some links up here. And uh, we're going to start converting all of those into actual HTML. So we'll start out. Um, everything in HTML is going to be one of these. It's going to be called a tag. Um, and you can see that we have this tag up here. And then we have this, uh, oh, this is a little bit too big. We have this closing tag down here. So you can see, again, everything starts out with a regular tag and ends with the same name, but with a slash. Let's make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So everything is going to be inside of an HTML tag because it is HTML. That's what we're going to use to make our website. And moreover, everything is going to be inside of a body tag, pretty much everything. The only things that aren't going to be inside of a body tag are things like what title we want it to show um, and information for like displaying it on Facebook. Uh, we're not going to get too into that right now. We will end up making a really small head later um, to store those things. But most of the stuff is going to be inside the body. So the first thing we're going to, we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an H1. Um, H1 means the biggest header. Uh, you can use H1 all the way down to H6, but we're going to start out with H1, which is the biggest one, and it says, hello, I'm Tyler, nice to meet you. You can see already uh, we get some, you know, some output on our website. Now, don't forget, again, it'll kind of work without this closing tag. Um, if you notice, we've got the opening tag. We did not put a closing tag here like we did for body or HTML, the ones with the slash. Um, it'll kind of work without that, but if you don't put it there, you'll start to get weird errors. Um, so for example, if I were to make a link, um, then part of the link would be really, really big. Um, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Uh, so it, to be reliable and to be correct, you would use these closing tags. So we're going to a closing tag there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to put a smaller heading. Well, we already figured out that a really big heading is going to be an H1. So a smaller heading is probably going to be H2. List of projects. I can type. There we go. So we got some headings. Um, not the world's best website yet, but that's OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to make a list. Um, so a list, we have two different types of lists in HTML. And by the way, the way that you figure all of this out is by Googling it, because some of these things are obvious, some of them aren't. HTML and body are pretty self-explanatory. But h1 and h2 are definitely not, and neither are lists, because the intuitive thing might be to do something like list, right? Uh, but that is actually not how we create a list in JavaScript. The way we create, or in HTML, the way we create a list in HTML, let's just Google it again, because this is what I always like to do, is these li um, and ul. Now, why is it ul? Um, the reason for that is actually because UL stands for unordered list, as in bullet points. Um, OL would be ordered list, which would be numbered. So everything that's on our list is in LI, and the entire thing is wrapped up in this UL. And I'll add some space here, just to make it a little bit more clear. HTML more or less ignores spaces. If there's more than one space in a row, um, it will be ignored. So we have this LI, um, and we're going to create our list of projects. I run code day. Create another LI, and don't forget to close them. I help organize Night Seattle. And while I'm doing this, you should be doing roughly the same thing. So go ahead, and if you haven't already, open up JSBin um, and start setting up your own website for what you want it to look like. 
So I help at PAX West. And I have made an automated plant watering system. So we've got our list. And again, you can see that more or less the same thing over here. Now, uh, I'm going to give everyone a, a few seconds maybe to catch up if you are making this as I'm making it as well. Um, but while I'm doing that, we're going to talk about something else really briefly. So up here, this section up here is also conceptually kind of a list. When you think about it, um, a bunch of links are actually conceptually kind of a list. They're just missing bullet points. So what we're going to do, and I'll explain this a little bit more later why this is helpful, but again, we really want things to be in the form of their you know, content first. We want to be thinking of things in terms of content first. So conceptually, what this is is a list, and all we've done is we've made it look a certain way. We've made it look like a traditional navigation bar. So what we'll do is we'll create exactly that. We'll create a second list right up here above our name. It's going to be a UL because we don't want it to be numbered. Again, just by way of example, if I change this to an OL, you can see that it is, um, you know, it turns it into numbers. Now, again, we could make this look however we want, but it's just one of those default things in the way that HTML works from before. Um, we had the ability to make anything look like anything but just regular text. So we have this UL up here. Um, again, another list. We're going to make an LI for resume. We'll make an LI for Twitch streams. We're going to make an LI for plant cam. Now, if it weren't immediately obvious, by the way, we're putting these tags inside of other tags, right? So this UL is between the body and the closing body, right? Resume is between the LI and the closing LI. All of these LIs are within the UL and the closing UL. So if it weren't immediately obvious, this is something that you're going to see a lot. We're going to get more and more deeply nested, um, as we say. You know, we're going to put things inside deeper and deeper levels of, you know, inside of this tag, which is inside of this tag, which is inside of this tag. We're going to do that more and more as we create our website. Um, and especially as we create more and more complicated websites. Uh, now, OK, so let's go on to the, the very next step. So the very next step is we've got all of these things here. It looks more or less now like the content that we've created over here. So I can just go ahead and close out of that. Um, but what we're missing now is, first of all, some links. So we're going to make these links. Now, how do we make something a link? Well, first of all, we know that the link is going to be inside of the bullet point. Not the, the entire bullet point is not going to be linked, just the text that's next to it. So that means that we can guarantee that it's probably going to be inside of the li slash li. Now, what is the tag for a link? Again, at its most basic level, you would assume that it would probably be something like link. And then again, we would put a slash link at the end. HTML is not that simple. It is an A for anchor. I have absolutely no idea why an anchor is related to a link. Um, in the way that it is, but it is. So we're going to create an anchor with the a tag rather than the link tag. Now, how do we tell it where we want it to go? Well, again, the intuitive answer might be something like target or destination, um, but that is not what HTML has standardized on. What HTML has decided is the way that we're going to make a link is href for hypertext reference. <laughs> Um, again, not necessarily the most intuitive. And this is one of those things where if you forget it, um, you can always look it up. Now, H A href is one of those things because links are really common. A href is one of those things that you're probably going to see all the time. So you're probably going to remember it. But in any case, um, that is going to be the simple way to do it. Now, what we need to do inside of the href, which is what's called a property, and Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see that this is not inside the tag. It's not like this. This is actually right next to the A. We'll put a space and we'll put href. href is equal to, um, and you can use single quotes or double quotes here, but the standard best practice is double quotes. Now, this is actually inside the tag. It's important to mention here that even though we have our closing tag, 
the closing tag only needs to say slash a. It does not need to say slash a href equals da da da. Only needs to say slash uh, a, and we only put the href up here at the beginning. And again, it's inside both the pointy brackets. Now, what's going to go inside of these double quotes right here is going to be the link, the full link that we're going to. So in this case, I want to go to code day. So I'm going to wait for our website to load, which is a little bit slow at times. I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to paste it here. Now, it's important that it does start with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash um, for a reason that I'm not going to get too much into in this basic workshop because it's not very easy to demonstrate unless you have a web server running. But that's what our link is actually going to look like. I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. And you can see that it's made a link. And if I right click and click open a new tab, it will actually open it. And I believe that if I just click this on its own, it will just open it in this little frame, which is maybe not ideally what we want to do. Maybe we want to open it in a new tab. Can I go back? Nope. It's a good thing I copied and pasted. OK. So we might want to open it in a new tab because, again, maybe this is not ideal. Now, people can always right click and click open a new tab. But if we want to do it, it's going to be another property, right? Just like this href, we can add another one, just put another space, target equals. So what's it called? A target, which again, I would think would be the target of the link, um, but that's not the way HTML works. So it's target equals underscore blank. Um, that's how we create it in a new, um, new tab. Again, is this the most intuitive thing? Uh, not really. But if I click it now, you can see it automatically opens in a new tab. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that again for the, for the other ones. I could copy and paste, but I'm going to rewrite it. Ahref equals HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash ignite seattle.com target equals underscore blank. Again, everything is always in these double quotes or single quotes. It's never just target equals underscore blank. It's always in quotes. And you can see, by the way, when we don't close it, you start to have these bugs where everything is now hyperlinked. HTML will try to do the right thing, but it doesn't always predict what the right thing is properly. Ahref packsite.com target equals underscore blank. Don't forget to close it. And we'll do one more. Ahref equals https tyler.vc slash plants target equals underscore blank. So um, if you click on any of these links now, you can see that they do actually go to the websites that hopefully I have linked correctly. Um, apparently, that's not the website anymore. Not that this really matters, because this is a demo. That's interesting. They don't support HTTPS. That's fine. OK. So we've got our links up here. Again, we're going to do the same thing up here, href. Now, maybe we don't want these to open in new tabs because, I don't know, if someone's clicking on them in the navigation bar, maybe they expect them to go in the default tab. I don't know why. Maybe they do. Twitch.tv slash org. And I don't actually have a resume, so I'm actually just going to remove this um, because I haven't updated my resume in probably eight or nine years. <laughs> uh, so we have our basic skeleton of our website. And now we can start to do things to make it look pretty um, because, again, this is a website, but it's pretty ugly. Now something, first of all, when we're talking about making things pretty, one of the intuitive things to do would be to add a picture. Now you could add a picture of you or a picture of something else. Um, in this case, I'm going to just find a picture on the internet. So let's take my Wikipedia picture. Now it's very important. You can see that this is actually a website. And it kind of looks like it's not, but when you see like it's got this thing on the bottom, it's got these things on the sides. What we'll want to do is actually find the original file, which we can do right here. 
Um, another place to put pictures, if you don't have a place to put them, might be somewhere like Imgur. Um, now again, you can theoretically uh, put all this up yourself on your on your own website. I'm not going to talk about that too much in this workshop because it's a little bit more complicated, but theoretically you could host the image yourself right alongside your HTML. Now in this case, I'm going to put in an image. Now what we're going to do for an image, image, I-M-G, not I-M-A-G-E. Um, I, I think that this is probably where the term imgur came from. S-R-C for source. Again, we're going to always put those uh, put those quotes there. Go ahead and paste. And there we go, we got our picture. Now again, it's a little big. Now one other thing you'll notice here about the way that I've written this is that traditionally we would put a slash image tag, right? Because every tag has to be closed. We talked about that earlier. Every tag has to have one of these slash tags at the end. The thing is, uh, you can't ever put anything inside of an image. It doesn't really make any sense. An image is its own thing. It'd be like trying to put something inside of text. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And so the way that you represent that generally in HTML is you put one of these. You just put a space, and you put a slash at the end, like this. That's the same as doing this. You can do this. Web browsers are OK with it. But the good way to do it is usually this, just to represent, like, don't ever put anything in here. It won't make any sense. So now we've got our image, we've got our h1, we've got our list of projects. Our image is a little bit big, but that's OK. Again, we've created all the really basic content of what we want here. This is the basic content of our website. We could more or less upload this somewhere, and it would be fine. But it doesn't look very nice. It just doesn't look good. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button that says CSS. Now, CSS is where we start to put things that tell our website what to look like. And the way CSS works, the way that you'll always see it work is it's got a rule, and it's got some, uh, some, or it's got a selector, and it's got some rules. And a selector is something that just selects a tag on the web page, and rules are things that tell it what to look like. So what's the most basic thing we could do with CSS? Well, the most basic thing we could do is we could select the body tag. And we could tell it that we want to make the body of the page, basically the entire web page. Uh, maybe we want to make the background like a different color. Let's choose a really ugly color just for fun. So the body of this web page, again, it's called body. And I'm going to warn you right now, CSS looks nothing like HTML. So you've got a two-for-one workshop here. You're learning two different languages. Neither of them are designed very well. Um, they're all kind of confusing. Uh, and that's just the way it is with web development. It is not just you if you feel confused. That is the way it is. So we're going to learn CSS as well. Now we get this thing called body, right? The way you write a selector in CSS is you just type the name of the thing you want to select at the most basic, at the most basic, right? We get this body tag. And then we put these little curly brackets. And uh, everything inside of the curly brackets are the rules. Let's make that a little bigger. Everything inside of these curly brackets are the rules. So we'll just go ahead and hide our HTML right now just so we can see this a little bit better. So again, we want to select the body tag, and we put these curly brackets, and inside of this is where we put the rules. Now, one of our rules is background color. And let's choose a background color. We can just make it blue. That's pretty ugly. Maybe we want a different shade of blue. The way that we can customize this rather than just typing text is with something called um, hexadecimal. I'm not going to teach you what it all means, but what I like to do is if you search for HSV color picker, um, or sorry, HSL color picker, don't worry about what that means. This is the one that I like. It's hslpicker.com. Pick a color that you like. We'll zoom in a little bit. And you can customize the hue. You can customize the saturation meaning how vivid you want it to be. You can customize the lightness. Maybe you want a really light green. Now what we would do is we would copy this thing. It always starts with a pound sign. Oops. Oh, it starts with a pound sign. We would copy this. We would paste it in here. And now we get our nice green background. We can also change the color. Now you'll notice that the bullet point color changed, but the link text did not. This text is also changed, but the link text is not. 
that actually gets into what CSS stands for, which is cascading style sheets. Don't worry about it too much. We will get into this much more in just a few seconds. But for starters, um, this looks ugly. This looks really ugly. Um, now we could try to find a matching color ourselves, um, but there are actually a few other tools. One of them that I like is Color Lover, uh, Lovers, and it's actually spelled the British way, but if you search for it, you'll find it. Um, or maybe they don't spell it the British way anymore. I think they used to. Uh, this is actually just a bunch of color palettes that you can search for. You can go over here to palettes and click view more and just find one that you like. Find one that looks nice. This is a really good resource. So maybe I want to make this look, uh, let's see. Not liking any of these so far. This one looks kind of cool. I'm going to make this a really desaturated, like earth tony sort of website. What I'll do is I'll click on this and then I'll search down here and you'll see that it's got this thing that says hex. I'll copy this and I'll paste it here. And remember every hex color always starts with this pound sign at the beginning. Now our foreground color, I wanna be one of the darker colors. So I'll copy this, I'll paste it here and it won't work. And that's because it needs a pound sign in front. It actually did work in Firefox. I don't think it'll work in Chrome. Oh, sorry, it did work in Chrome. I don't think it'll work in Firefox. So you can see already, this is starting to look a little bit better. What are some other things we can do? Well, we can change the font. And the way that we do this actually is not font, it's font family. And we can just change the font to any font that people would be likely to have installed on their computers. Now there's ways to make it fonts that people don't have installed on their computers, uh, but it's a little bit more complicated out of the scope of this workshop again. So we're gonna choose something like Arial. Um, or if you wanna be fancy and you have a Mac, Helvetica. And what we can do is we can say, hey, if this person doesn't have a Mac and they don't have Helvetica installed, we can put a comma and we can put Arial. And by the way, the comma goes outside of the Single quotes, not inside. We can say, hey, well, maybe they don't have Arial. Well, then just choose any sans serif font. Sans serif meaning it doesn't have those little, um, if I just delete this, you'll see. It's got the, you know these little uh, things coming off the top of those. Those are serifs. We want one without one, so we choose a sans serif. And if we wanted to make this really ugly, maybe we could have used Comic Sans um, as the first font choice. Okay, so we got those. Next thing we want to do, our picture is really big. Anyone remember what the, um, the image tag was called? Well, it's IMG, right? IMG, so we're gonna select the image and we're gonna set its width to maybe like, let's say 40% of the web browser. So this is actually gonna scale up and down. Now we could set it to a fixed width, like 200 PX. Um, but, that's gonna be really ugly because then if I, you know, if I zoom out to the proper web size, well, maybe that's really small. Maybe the person has a high res monitor, you know, 4K monitor and 200 pixels is like a really small thing. So instead, let's go with something like percent. Now again, 40% might be really big. So one thing we could also do is we could put a max width. Um, by the way, uh, like in Java, everything has to end in a semicolon here. So max width. Let's say that we want the max width, it's no more than 500 pixels. And maybe we even want a min width of no less than 200 pixels. There we go. Cool, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, it's not beautiful yet, but it's starting to look pretty good. So that's more or less how it's gonna go. So if we wanna select all the, the links and change their color, now links kind of override the default color, right? Because links have that visited state and the unvisited state. So they've overridden our default color, which is why they're this own, their own color. Now we can just override that ourselves by just manually selecting the A's. This is what's called a default style sheet or a browser style sheet um, that's making them that different color. I think this is kind of confusing though. So let's go ahead and choose maybe a slightly different color for our links. Let's try this one and see what it looks like. Eh, it's not quite different enough. What about this one? Eh, what would happen if we tried this bright green. That is looking okay. I'm not convinced that that's the best color for this. Um, it's actually pretty hard to read. It's looking okay. I think I'm gonna go back to the red. There we go. It's obvious that they're links, but you know. Okay, 
So we've got these, uh, we've got this, you know, this website. Um, I can even pop it out into a new tab. It doesn't look like it's saved. Way to... I don't know why it's not saving, but that is okay. I'll just continue to look at it in here. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to go ahead. There we go. I just have to click Run with JS apparently. So this is not looking too bad. What were some of the other things we wanted to do? Well, we wanted to move these links over to the right hand side, and we wanted to um, make them so that they were uh, not having the bullet points. Now, how would we do that? Well, the problem here is that if we were to just select a UL, and just to, to you know, as a means of showing this, I'm going to just make the background color for, for this UL red. So we're going to do background color red. We can see that this is now red, right? The problem is that this is also a UL. So we get two different things here. Now, what we can do to separate these two is we can give this a name. And the way we do that is we say class equals and we give it a name. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, get rid of the output for right now. We get this class equals, and I can't make that any smaller. We're going to name this nav. So now when we go back to our CSS, what we can do, let's zoom out a little bit, we'll turn back on our output. Now what we can do is we can tell UL background color red, all these will be red. And if we want to select just the ones that are named nav, we type a dot nav. We don't actually even need to type ul. We can just select by name by just putting dot nav. I can't quite see this. Let's zoom in that far. You can type just nav. I'm going to type ul dot nav just to make it a little bit more clear because you can actually have multiple things with the same name. It doesn't have to be the same name. Now what do we want to do? Well, we actually don't want this to be, um, we actually don't want this to be red. What we want to do, first of all, is get rid of those bullet points and some of the padding. Because if you notice, it kind of pads it out a little bit to the left. Now padding is easy. All we do is set padding to zero. But if you notice, these uh, bullet points are still kind of peeking out from the side a little bit. And they, it's because they're still there. So I'm not even going to worry about padding yet. We're going to try to get rid of the bullets first. Now what I want to do, the bullets are actually part of these LIs, right? If we go back to the HTML, we see that we have these LIs. And those are the things that are actually drawing our bullet points here. What we can do with CSS is we can actually select an LI inside of a UL. And the way we do that is we just use a space. So now what we've said is all LIs that are inside of a UL named nav, the class nav. Now, what we, what we want to do, we want to do list style type, none. How are you going to know that? Again, the things like you can select a li inside of a ul named nav, those are something you're going to have to more or less remember. But for things like removing a list style, what you'll do is, again, you'll probably just Google it. List style remove bullet, or list remove bullet HTML. And what you'll find is, oh, here's someone who's saying list style type none. HTML and CSS are full of things that you might not remember the name to. And so it's important that you remember that with any type of programming at all, you're probably always going to be Googling things. And it's totally OK to do that. So what we've done is we've done this list style type. Now we need a separate rule to remove the padding. Because if we try to remove the padding from these LIs, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Because the LIs themselves have no padding. It's actually the UL. Again, how would you have known that? Probably try it, and when it doesn't work, Google it. So what we need is another selector, padding 0. What's the other thing we can do? Well, we also probably want these to be next to each other rather than on top of each other. The way that we do that is, by default, this is called display block. And what it does is it draws a block around each one of these things. The way I'm going to show you that, it'll actually do a border. You can see on each one of these LIs, I put a border, and you can see that it draws it. And it draws it as going all the way to the end of the line. Instead of doing that, we want it to be inline, right? And the way we do that is we say display 
inline. You can see that immediately it has changed it to be the proper method. The last thing we want to do is we want to make it right aligned. And the way we do that is we say text align right. Now, this is super confusing, by the way. And again, this is one of those things where you would probably want to Google it. If you just search for align, if you just try align, it's not going to work. It is actually text align. Now, why is it text align? Because text align will actually also align images and pretty much anything else you have in the web page. It will align videos as well. So why is it called text align? I don't know. Uh, because HTML was made in 1992, probably. Um, and CSS was made not that long after, and it really hasn't gotten good ever. But that is the way we're going to do it. So if I click Run with JS now, and I refresh this website, that's still not saving. I don't know why it's not saving. That's OK. We'll just turn on only output. You can see that we kind of have a web page. Um, it's still not perhaps the most beautiful thing. These are all left aligned, and this is right aligned, which is really jarring. So one thing we could do is we could actually center align everything. And you'll notice that these will actually stay left aligned. And the reason for that, again, is that CSS cascades down. It's so the most specific rule is the one that applies. So if we say the body should be text align center, these will actually stay right aligned because we've told them to right align themselves. And that's more specific than body. That's also further down. If they're the same specificity, the one that's further down applies. So again, not the most beautiful thing. Maybe we want to do the other UL to also be, you know, the style type none. And OK, we got, a, we got an OK looking website. If you put this up on the internet and uh, people saw it and you, know, you were using it to show off your projects, it would not be the worst thing in the world, especially not for one that we created in half an hour, right? What are some things that we could do to make this look better? We could add photos of our projects. You know, we could probably focus a little bit more on the text that we have. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be that, you know, it doesn't have to be super complicated. And again, if you go to something like TJ Horner's website, it's got, okay, it's got this interactive thing. I actually don't like this because it takes forever to load. Um, but what is this conceptually? It's some center aligned text or some left aligned text this is actually inside of a center aligned thing. Don't worry about it. It's not too hard. You could figure out how to do this again by Googling it. Some headings that have their color set to different colors. Some text. And it looks like they've set the font. Um, TJ has set the font to be, um, you know, like mono spaced font. And he's done a good job with the colors, right? But that is the very basics. Now, I did want to talk about a few things that you might want to consider, uh, especially if you've done something like this before and you're a little bit more advanced. Um, one of them is that if you notice, CSS is really annoying. Because like, for example, we have this UL, and then we have this ul.navli, and we have this ul.nav. And wouldn't it be nice if we could just put something like li inside of it, like nest it, like you would with an if statement or something, or you would with HTML even, right? That is not possible. The other thing, if you're used to Python, that some people will be annoyed by is these curly brackets and the, the semicolons and everything else. So one thing you can do, browsers only know about CSS, but you can use something that turns other things into CSS. And one of those is called SAS. SAS is the one that I like. And what SAS is, is a program that you can run on your computer. Let's see if we can find an example. is a program that you can run on your computer that all it does is it turns things like this into things like this. It also supports things like variables, which you'll see, which CSS does not support. Um, it supports things like nesting, which CSS does not support. And it compiles it down all automatically. It also has some functions and some other nice things too. So that's one thing to look into. You can, If you're using something other than Linux, if you're using PC or, or Mac, um, you can find really great programs that will automatically deal with all of this for you. What are some other things? Well, one thing, for first of all, you'll notice that JSMA doesn't really save things very well. 
Um, there is a way to save, but like, you have to know this URL and you have to bookmark it. And I don't know how long they save it for. You can do this all on your local computer. And again, that's one of those things where what I would do is I'd Google probably like Mac local web server. And it looks like there is, and in fact on Mac, I would probably search on the app store for something. And you can probably get the free one. That's one thing you can do. Now, where are you gonna want, where are you gonna put these when it's done? Well, again, what I would do is I'd probably search for HTML hosting simple. And look at all of these things. I would avoid this one. This one's gonna be really complicated. And here are some really basic ones. Drag your site folder here. That one looks good. Um, Netlify, the company that is hosting this, uh, is also really great. There are more; they support more complicated web apps. Um, but this looks like a good one. You know, you get things like um, this one that wraps up a bunch of them. Um, here's one that looks like a really polished-looking um, app. It's got a free trial, so you probably would have to pay for it. At four dollars a month, not too bad. Um, there are other ones, uh, Nearly Free Speech, I think was one that I used to use a lot. And they just sort of charge you a very small amount depending on how many people are using it. Um, and they support some um, more advanced things as well. Um, they can give you databases, make it a little bit more complicated. But in the simplest form, you just upload your files um, using what's called FTP, which you can download a program for for free for your computer, um, or it's built into Mac. And uh, actually, I think it's built into PC as well. Um, and so this is another one too. There's a bunch of different options out there. And what you would do is you would just throw up your HTML. What you could, what you would do for the CSS, you would actually copy it all. You'd put a head above your body. Don't forget to close it. Style. Oops. If I can type. Paste it, and there we go. And so now you have a single file, and all you would need to do is name it something.html and upload it. Um, by the way, if you go to a website, like let's go to our website, you'll notice that I didn't put a web page at the end, it's just srnd.org. What that is, is it's actually a web page named index.html. It's really hard to see because I can't zoom this part in, um, but it's actually called index.html. So if you uh, just want it to be a default page, no other pages, just name it index.html. So that is gonna just about do it for the basic um, introduction to HTML, CSS. Um, we didn't talk about JavaScript. JavaScript is how you would make programs run in the web browser to do fancy things with your website. Um, we haven't talked too much about hosting or anything else, I understand, um, but this is hopefully a good enough basic introductory workshop um, to really get you to understand um, kind of what is uh, going on with um, HTML, CSS, and at least give you a starting place. And the important part, as with most programming languages, is not that you know exactly what to do and that you know every single step of the way along the process. Um, because most professional programmers never quite know every single step of the way of how they're gonna get from nothing to a fully functioning web app. The important thing, as with any type of programming, is that you just start. And now, hopefully, you know where to start. And if you wanna make it more interactive later, and you wanna make it look nicer, and you wanna link to multiple websites, and all sorts of other things out there that are possible, the important thing is that you just start so that you have a starting place. And then you figure out things piece by piece as you go along. Um, so I'm gonna get to Q&A really quickly. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, while people are doing that, if anyone does have any questions, I just wanted to mention tomorrow, if you've ever wanted to know how to make a web server, we're not gonna talk about making websites themselves, but if you wanna know how to make the program that actually receives requests from a web browser and somehow makes them into things, um, you know, makes them do things. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Um, we're gonna do that in Python. On Wednesday, uh, we are going to talk about Docker, which is another sort of web server, a little bit more complicated, but if you're really interested in new web technologies and you wanna get the basic understanding of what's going on, 
um, so that you're going to be well prepared for the job market in the future because this is not something that people are going to teach in in high school it's not even something that people are going to teach in college often but something like docker which is brand new but really really popular in the industry knowing that is going to be uh, you know really really helpful so if you want to learn about that that is on wednesday at noon uh, thursday at noon we have a unity workshop so we're going to talk about making video games if you've never made a video game before and you want to try it unity is a great way to do it um, and then Friday, finally, we're going to have a workshop on getting an internship. So if you want to have an internship next summer uh, and you don't have one right now and you, you know, really want to know what it is that you're going to need to do over the school year and it, so that you'll have a paying internship next summer, um, that is what we're going to talk about on Friday. Uh, we're going to have a, a guest speaker, uh, Fedor Paretsky, who's going to talk about what you need to know in order to successfully um, get an internship this summer. So with that, if there's no other questions, that's going to do it for us um, today. Hope to see you tomorrow at 12 for the Build Your Own Web Server Workshop. And uh, if you have any questions again, or you are struggling to figure out how to do something in HTML, CSS, and you can't find the answer on Google, or you want to do something more complicated, don't forget to check out chat.srnd.org. Um, and we are happy to answer your questions as they come up and uh, help you make really cool websites. Uh, sorry, 12 PM Pacific. Uh, so same time as today. All workshops this week are at the, the exact same time of the day, just different days of the week. 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So hope to see you then.